let's talk a little bit about water as a bridge for frequency. We know that water can hold and react to electromagnetic frequency. We know that water can build that specialized exclusion zone, cell-bound, structured water in the presence of infrared energy, right? Gerald Pollack and his team out of the University of Washington found that that different structure of water, that plasma water that builds against hydrophilic surfaces, it holds a negative charge right outside of it, builds a positively charged zone. So this plasma water, so to speak, builds and increases in size in infrared energy. We also know that ultraviolet light can excite this fourth phase of water, this plasma water. And when we see it encircling something like our melanin, we know that ultraviolet light splits that water into molecular hydrogen and molecular oxygen, serving as a reservoir for energy in the body. This flux between an oxidative state of inflammation and an electron-rich state that is able to act as an antioxidant and quench some of that inflammation in the body. So we know that water can hold and store and emit electromagnetic frequency. We know that it can store and emit electrical current. Of course, we're talking about water that would have some solutes in it, just like the water that we would find in any living system. So we know that it responds to electromagnetic frequency. It responds to electrical fields. It responds to to magnetic fields. It responds to sound. It responds to light, infrared light, ultraviolet light. And we know from the work of Masura Emoto and Veda Austin that there is this relationship happening with water and thoughts or intentions. Both of their work beautifully describes how water seems to respond to frequency information of all kinds, including our intentions. Emoto was working with a water crystallization technique that froze water that had been exposed to different words, positive words such as love, hope, peace, and more negative connotations like evil and violence, you fool. And you can see a stark difference between the two crystal formations happening when he froze those waters, a beautiful crystallization happening with the positive words, and a chaotic crystal formation in the negative connotations. And Veda Austin has taken that work and she has her own flash freezing technique. In fact, anybody can learn it on her site. But what she's doing is she's having this relationship, this conversation with water, where water is acting as a conduit for intentions and thought. And I think that the more I look at this, the more I study about water memory with Jacques Benveniste and his work with immunology, he was taking an allergen and diluting it down so that there was no allergen present. But when he introduced that dilution, that had the allergen in it. So it was basically just water. When he introduced that to human basophils, to an immune cell that released histamine, when we get seasonal allergies, we get a runny nose, we get a sneeze, a cough, watery eyes, all of that is because of release of histamine from our basophils, one of our immune cells that releases histamine. And this reaction was still occurring, even though the allergen wasn't there. It had been diluted down so there was no physical allergen, but the water seemed to hold that same frequency. We see that mirrored in Luc Montagnier's work with microbes and DNA and how water could hold hold that frequency. In fact, he could record that frequency and send it to a lab in another country. And that lab would play that frequency to a glass of water and nucleic acids. And these nucleic acids are the building blocks of DNA. So it was a glass of water with the building blocks of DNA, and it would recreate the original viral 
DNA up to 98% identical. It was absolutely mind blowing. And you look at some of the research around water, Jerem Pollock's work that I just talked about, or Emilio de Gudice and Giuliano Preparata and their work with the quantum electrodynamics of water and how water can act as this conduit for frequency. We see that mirrored in Irina Kosick's work and this resonance model of the body. And so the more I learn about water, the more I research, the more I think about this, the more I think that water is acting as this bridge for frequency, this unseen information that's guiding all life on this planet, whether that be light whether it be sound, whether it be frequency of excited, energized fields, electromagnetic fields, scalar, electrical fields, magnetic fields. Water seems to be this incredible bridge between this unseen frequency and matter as we know it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this content, subscribe and stay tuned for more.